welcome to another Art of Composing vlog. I'm John Branningham, and I believe this is episode number 10. We are going to be composing a chord progression today. I figured this would be interesting. Now, if you've never seen this chart here that I've got in front of me, uh, this is my chord progression chart, and I've built it up over the last few years, and I'm working on a version 2 right now. Um, but what it is is it effectively shows you how you can write a chord progression in one key uh, that is logical, it makes sense, but it allows you to add um, chromatic harmony, modal borrowing, things like that uh, automatically. And I figured I'd go over how it works and why I think it's just a really useful tool. So we're going to start off and we're going to pick a key and we'll grab a pencil. So First, we have to pick a key, and um, you know it's important that you understand the chords that are in that key. Now, this chart isn't transposed right now. One of the new things that I want to do with version 2.0, if I can get to that that point, is create an app that will automatically transpose to any key that you want. Um, that makes reading it a little bit simpler. However, right now, we're just going off with the Roman numerals. Now, if you're not familiar with Roman numerals, I would recommend checking out my, my free course on YouTube, or you can sign up for the full free course at my website um, where I go over what Roman numerals are, basically. Uh, they're effectively ways of representing scale degrees and the chords built off of them in any key. It's, it's keyless, really. Um, so you've got, uh, you've got six chords that we use that we call functional chords in any scale. These are one, six, Four, two, seven, five, and then we go back to one. So, and what this chart does is it lays it out in a direction that you can always go with your harmony, so that you it always feels like you're making forward progress. Um, one of the the things that will make your music feel um, incorrect, which it's not really incorrect. There's usually times when you want to use non-functional harmony that doesn't necessarily have this, you know, very classical uh, forward motion. Um, however, if you're trying to write a diatonic chord progression, you want it to feel like a standard chord progression, then you do want to follow some of these rules for, for the direction that your harmony should go. And if you notice, everything goes from left to right. So I'll play that progression again that I played. One, six, four, two, seven, doing this in the key of C major just to make, get your head wrapped around it a little easier. Now the beauty of it is that I can go from left to right uh, as much as I want, like I can skip as many steps. So I could very easily go one, two, four, to seven, back to one. Um, and what uh, that allows me to do is, is start to create uh, a different variety of chord progressions. You know, I don't have to always do the one, six, two, five kind of thing every time. Um, and then what you'll see here as well are, are some big arrows that show you the motion that you can go backwards on the chart so you can get back to the beginning of the circle. And now the big one obviously is five to one. Right, that, that cadential sound. But five can also go back to the sixth chord. Right? That's known as a deceptive cadence. And it can also go back to a four six chord. It's got some of the, the same motion. It's got that G to A in the bass. So. Right? It's got a very a kind of a softer sound. It's less dramatic than the the traditional deceptive cadence. Um, now what that allows us to do is effectively create like a rotation on the chart, one harmonic rotation. And within a, a theme, let's say, you may have multiple harmonic rotations. You'll go from one to the end of the chart at some point and then back to one uh, probably multiple times within a single theme. So being able to, to write a chord progression like this is extremely valuable for any composer. Now you also notice a few other things on here. I've got these little golden fives uh, down in the corners, and that's representing applied dominance. And with each of these chords, pretty much, except for the seven, 
you can apply its own dominant. So if you were in that, pretending to be in that key for a minute. For an example, if we were to go from one to six, in between those two chords, I can add the applied dominant to six, which is actually an E7 chord. In this case, we're doing C to A minor. Right? And that's a really cool sound. That's very useful for anybody. Um, and I can do that in any of these ones that have little golden five in the corner. Now, the one thing about seven is it's not a key. It's, it's a diminished scale. Or it's a diminished... Um, half diminished chord depending on if it's a, a triad or a seventh and there's no diminished key there's a major key there's a minor key there's no diminished key now there's diminished scales and theoretically you could figure out like what's the fifth in that scale um, however it doesn't sound the same as an applied dominant so we don't normally do applied dominance to um, to the seven chord but if I play through the whole chart just using those applied dominants it, it's got a really cool sound so it would be C to E7, in there, to A minor, to C7, which is the dominant of F, right? And then we've got A7 to D minor, which we're at 2. There's that 7 chord, which just doesn't get any uh, kind of dominant of its own. And then we could do... Actually, we... We probably just skip and go straight to that that D7 right there. So a little bit faster. cadence at the end. Now there's also a couple other things everyone always asks me about the three chord. Right? I know it's a very pretty chord and you hear it. That kind of sound all the time. Um, and the three chord in a traditional classical sense is not functional in the same way that you know one or four or five are, are considered functional. However it is used all over the place. You use it usually leading to six. It's got kind of a dominant feel. Right? It feels kind of like we land on that six chord. It also sounds really good moving to four because you've got that half step in the bass. And, you know, usually if you're using a three chord, you can often substitute the applied dominant to that sixth chord, which is an E7 chord in this case. All right, so you can do the same thing here. You hear that a lot, especially in, in kind of classic rock. It's got a good classic rock sound. Now you can transpose this chart. So we're doing this in C major, uh, but why don't we do it in F major? So. sound pretty. It's just, you know, if you don't take a moment to, to pause on this. What are we doing here? We can't just take a moment to enjoy it. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a progression. I, I said I would do it at the beginning, and we're going to, I mean, shoot, we can pick, why don't we stay in F major, because it's kind of an easy key, right? But we're going to go, let's say, from one, all right, so I can write And now we're at that 
that 5 6 chord back to that 1 chord. And then apply the chord here. And why don't we do a cadential 6-4. So if you've never heard me talk about that, that's effectively, it's the same as a 1-6-4 chord, right? So we got an F chord with a C in the bass. However, I like to write it as 5-6-4 because these two notes, they drop down. Just add the seventh there at kind of the end. Boom. So that's all C. C here, C7. Actually, this is supposed to be G7. And then why don't we go back to one? So, this is the first progression that we've written. So that's, that is a great way to get through an entire harmonic rotation. And then what we could do is, from here, we could also use some modal borrowing. chart maybe I'll save that for another vlog but it's effectively the same numbers you just have to change if it's major or minor so a six becomes a flat six kind of sound right so let's go secrets that I was telling you there, especially the minor chart. However, I figured it was going to be interesting for you to watch this. Now, if you want to get this chart, you can get it. Um, you know what? I'll post some links below this video so you can download the charts. You can also find it on my Diatonic Harmony article. And I highly recommend if you really want to dive into this chart and understand how to use it to its full power, including modulating to closely related keys and just writing really interesting uh, progressions, then check out my Music Composition 101 course. It's very thorough and it covers all the fundamentals that you really need as a composer to be able to compose consistently and to have music that sounds like it makes sense. So with that, I will talk to you. Actually, this evening we're doing a symposium, but other than that, I will talk to you tomorrow.